This is a dual outboard drivetrain operating from a single variable speed brushless motor. The core concept is based around this mechanically linked set of open differentials that act as a variable switch to selectively transmit power to either of the outboard motors at will. This is accomplished by using these servo clutch clamps to slow or lock out the rotation from one side of the differential, forcing the torque to flow into the outboard propellers. When the clamps aren't engaged, the static load on the propeller sends all the torque to the clamp side, which causes the prop to idle regardless of motor speed. This allows you to effectively turn the props on and off at the push of a button. With the drive shafts connected, there is some noticeable drag when spinning the props by hand. Removing the final drive shaft and spinning the propellers gives a good impression of just how much drag exists with the driveline connected. It spins much more freely when it's disengaged. This is the primary input where the motor will connect to. It is fairly smooth when spinning it by hand, but there is some detectable drag. Testing the drivetrain out using this drill shows that everything is in working order. When locking out the servo clamps by hand, the power is transmitted directly into the outboard props, so everything seems to be working well enough. Now it's time to attach the actual motor. This is a high-speed brushless motor connected to a warm drive reduction gearbox. The ratio is 40 to 1 with a maximum output of about 240 RPM. This drive run bench test gives promising results and everything seems to be working well. There are alignment issues with the shafts and the couplers, but hopefully they won't have too big of a negative impact on the operation. The servo clutch clamps perform well enough. They are able to produce enough clamping force to redirect power to the propellers in this dry run at least. I've melted the worm gear in this reduction gearbox in the past. As far as I can tell, it's able to withstand about 30 watts or so at peak RPM before it starts to break. The use of grease really helps extend its life though. Here's an example of a melted worm gear and also how a freshly greased one looks. I wanted to grab some power draw data while still on the bench, so here's a quick half and full throttle run. Keep in mind I can't calibrate this gauge, so we have to subtract 3.1 watts from the final readings. Under half throttle, it's pulling about 9.1 watts, and under full throttle, we measure around 10.2 watts or so. We can use these readings against the ones we take in the water to guesstimate how much power is making it to the propellers. Once in the water, this boat is painfully slow, even under full throttle. The hull isn't streamlined in any way and all the weights at the front of the craft. It does track nicely and it is able to perform turns without any issues though, even if the turns are kind of wide and very slow. The servo clutch clamps don't have enough force to completely hold the differential brakes, so they wind up slipping under even mild load. The servo clamps are also not very good at allowing for small adjustments to the brake speed. They basically operate in a binary fashion, they're either on or off. Further refinement of these clamps would need to be done to get better results. Taking a look on the outboard camera reveals that we are pulling the same amount of power in the water as we were on the bench, roughly 9.1 watts at half throttle and 10.2 watts at 100% throttle. This would indicate that we are getting some slippage in the drivetrain. So to find where the slippage was occurring, I first manually locked up the differential brakes so they were unable to rotate. Doing this cost us the ability to turn the craft, but it drastically changed the propulsion performance as well as the power draw. At 50% throttle, we were pulling around 15 watts, and at 100% throttle, we were solidly in the 20 watt range. After just a few seconds of running like this, we again lost power and developed a slip somewhere else in the drivetrain. I used a marker to indicate driveline alignment and then ran at full speed for a bit till it started slipping. In doing this, I was able to find the slips and lock them down. This slow motion footage helps find the slippage a little easier too. With the slippage completely eliminated, I ran the boat again, this time getting a peak draw of about 27 watts at 100 RPM. I loaded the craft with heavy stone, and after uh, another few short pulls, crisis struck again when the worm gear and the reduction gearbox began to melt. This is the point at which it fails. You can see that power draw increased to about 37 watts as the friction built up, and just as quickly as that happened, the gears were destroyed. You can see here the warm gears are melted and distorted, and if there wasn't any grease in there, it would have probably happened even sooner and at a lower load. If we can trust our power data, the motor was able to put out about 16.8 watts into the water before melting, with a total power output of right around 30 watts into the system as a whole. Overall, I would consider this design to be a failure. Critical elements in the drivetrain simply cannot handle the power output 
output of the motor, namely the worm gear in the gearbox and the servo clamps on the differential brake. I would also change the dimensions of the propellers since they're turning at such a low RPM, I think it might help to increase their size a little bit or maybe by a lot. I suppose it's a good first try, but it needs a complete redesign in my opinion.